name that's been around for 60 years now, just celebrated their 60th birthday. You had the classic Mini, of course, until 2000 when BMW brought out the new Mini, which have changed and developed a little bit along the way, but they're still all about the classic Mini. Of course, you've now got the circular headlights, the circular theme that you see throughout this car. With every generation of the new Mini, they do grow a little bit bigger. So Mini, I don't know, is it a Mini? You come round over here, this is the five door hatch version for example, and you have a look, it's pretty spacious in the back seat. Not bad at all for a five door hatch. So not Mini over there, but where it maybe could be called Mini is in the boot, which I'm afraid is rather Mini and rather small. You have got a nice useful area below here as well, nice secure area there because of course you don't have spare wheels with run flat tires but boot space is a bit limited and then of course on the latest generation you actually have the Union Jack proudly British in the rear light sound lights over here the one we're driving is the Cooper S version as you see there and also very clearly designated by the twin pipes in the center over there to tell you it is a Cooper S. What does Cooper S mean in Mini Talk? Well, it's a four cylinder, two litre engine, petrol, puts out 141 kilowatts, 280 newton meters. Nothing Mini about that, let me tell you. Let's check it inside. Behind the wheel, this is very typically Mini as well. The circular theme that comes throughout the cabin, everywhere from the instrumentation in front of the driver, and talking about the instrumentation in front of me. We've done 368 kilometers on this test, averaging 7.2 liters per hundred. That's an interesting figure, and let me just spend a moment on that, because I did a pure freeway cruise at the beginning of the test, and managed to do that at six liters per hundred exactly. It was just over 100 kilometers, cruising at the speed limit, really trying to be a little bit careful. Then I've done commuting duty and playing with this little button down here. And I'm jumping to it right now. The typical mini toggle switches over here, including the stop start for the engine. But this one here, that when I click upwards, tells me I'm going into sport mode and sport displays. And let me tell you, you hit that button, it gives you a kick up the rear end. It definitely feels like there's a little bit of extra oomph, shall I call it. And there's definitely a little bit more grunt go and it holds gear ratios a little bit longer. To my gear ratios, seven speed automatic transmission, very smooth, very relaxed. Everything nice about it really works well. So you've got those switches over there, as I mentioned, you've got your dual zone aircon. And of course, you've got the mini infotainment screen over here with your controller down between the front seats down here where you've got the you can of course just toggle it like that or you can press that button for menu and there you go on here to the menu now I've got a comment on the test car because minis are customizable many have proudly proclaimed it's very difficult to get two minis exactly the same because it's the options list where everything comes in and well if it was me I'm toggling through as you can see there's one thing I would be putting onto my mini and that is navigation on the screen and I find it a bit strange that doesn't have I know a lot of people are saying Android Auto or Apple CarPlay you don't need I'm still of the school I'd like to have the other thing that I think is sadly missing on this test car is you've got rear park distance control but come on today where's a rear camera it is definitely an option I know that could be easily specced on the car I would be specking it on mine that's for sure what this particular car does have of course is the dual sunroofs above us over here with manual shutter but electric operation on the roof itself if you want to open it for the front section over there 
nice feature but question of whether you want to use it or not obviously it is entirely up to you you also have a look down on the dash over here and you'll see you've got this interesting inlay style on the dashboard over here you've got nice it looks like soft touch but it's harder but look it's bmw quality seeing as many as are made by bmw these days so you don't have to worry about that and of course you do get the very standard five year hundred thousand kilometer maintenance plan on cooper and cooper s models the thing about minis they're not cheap and nobody will ever pretend they're cheap this particular version in standard spec, and I use that word very, very carefully, retails at approximately 474,000 Rand. Then you can start with extras. And I'm going to say it comes back to that very old story of pick your extras carefully. Choose what you want. Another feature this car doesn't have is it's got the keyless start, but it doesn't have keyless entry. You've got to press on the key to unlock the doors. Up to you, personally, I think it's become a safety feature to particularly be able to unlock, say, the driver's door when you touch on the door handle. So it's little things like that, the reverse camera, etc., that I would certainly be specking on the Mini I bought. And sunroof, you can live with it or live without it, your choice. But what this car does have, of course, with that 141 kilowatts, 281 newton meters of torque, is typical mini performance the go-kart handling no matter how much bigger they get even the countryman versions you still get that super go-kart kind of handling out of a mini it hugs the road it really does you've got instant response on the steering it's almost jittery when i first got into it but you get used to it very quickly and it certainly takes the bends and takes a winding road beautifully like you expect minis to do it's got that fuel economy can depend on the way you drive it and how much fun you want to have it with it. The thing about the Mini, and I'm not going to discuss competitors right now, because when you're buying a car, if you're the kind of person that wants a Mini, you're the kind of person that wants a Mini. And it's going to come down to which Mini do you want and how do you want to spec my Mini. For Motor Matters, I'm Eleanor and I'll see you next time.